Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm back again. I'm back again. Okay. Let's just start again. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, everybody, for <laughs> the technical issue. Sorry, Hello. Kate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> just, just as we were saying that, we were so good with technology. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I, I just wanted to try it out how it works, but okay, I understood not like not a good idea. Okay, let's just stick okay. with this one device. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Wow. 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 Okay. Hope everybody is back again. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Okay. So, so um, Katie. Yes. Okay. How's let me just. Good, 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 good. <laughs> okay, let's just start from, from yeah, um, from the beginning. Okay, yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good too. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, I was we we started saying that how we haven't talked basically like like this, you know, like talk talk um, since 2019, where we actually met for the first time, right? Exactly. It's been a while. Yeah. A year. Yeah. Ago. Yeah, well, almost almost two years. Yeah, actually, almost two years because you came around yeah. the middle of 2019, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Las Terenas, Pateta Paradise, and I saw some some names um, who also have participated at Pateta Paradise, and yeah, that's when I met you, mm -hmm. right? And I actually met you through. I mean, I got to know you more in person um, through Maria. Through Maria, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. Know. The first time we actually spoke was when we did a photo shoot together. Yes. With yes. Maria and yourself. That was a lot. Exactly. Fun. That <laughs> was so much fun. Guys, most of the beautiful picture you see me with white t shirt or even like in bikini or like swimsuit, that was thanks to Katie. Yeah, it was yes. my first professional photo session and that was with you and I loved it. And next um, next time I see you we're gonna do another one too. Yes please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun and I was already impressed then because you were you were living in Las Telenas when I met you. You were not just yes. you were not just staying there for a few weeks like me or for a month. You you were how long were you staying there? I lived there for a full year in 2019 and then I left around actually like a couple months before the pandemic started. And oh, then, wow. Yeah. So I left in maybe January and then the pandemic really hit in like March, I believe. Yeah. So, and then I just got back here in December again. So it was actually, it was actually really cool because I left like January. No, the end of December, and I came back, like, the exact date that I left. So I got to see, like, Christmas and New Year's in Las Terrenas that I actually missed out on when I left before. So wow. Full circle. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting already... Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wow. plan it like that. It was actually really cool that it happened that way, though. That's even better. That, that's yeah. even better. Yeah, when it just happens like that. Yeah, so I was already yeah. impressed back then to meet somebody like you because you are kind of you are you are one of the people who I really admire and you you are living kind of the way I would like to live and I'm sure that you know the people who are going to tune in tonight that they're also kind of interested in how you live so I would say can you can we can you just introduce yourself properly <laughs> sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, my name's uh, Katrine but I go by Katie. A lot of people know me as Katie. Um, and yeah, I work as a freelance photographer, videographer, editor. Um, my academic background is actually, I did a master's in documentary media. So I'm mostly interested in um, documentary style stuff. But unfortunately, it's a little hard to make a living doing that. And, and um, in the meantime, I've been trying to make... Um, money in other ways and I've been working a lot as production assistant trying to get into the film industry stuff like that 
but at the same time as you mentioned I have this lifestyle where I kind of have lived in a few different places so before I came to Dominican I was actually living in Colombia for a few years as well um, so I first went to Colombia when I was 19 um, I kind of I lived in the city of Cartagena which is on the northern coast on the Caribbean coast and I just absolutely fell in love with the city um, I ended up getting married to a Colombian <laughs> so it was like a whole seven year process of going living in Colombia and living in between Canada and Colombia so that was really my first like introduction um, into Latino culture and and Caribbean culture because it's very Caribbean on the north coast of Colombia mm -hmm. as well and then yeah so I fell in love with the culture there I fell in love with the music I fell in love with the dance I've always loved dance and music as well and then when I came to Dominican it was kind of a natural it was a natural thing for me that I was like drawn towards the dance and the music wow. of, of the country as well yeah wow so, so that's so, my weird introduction <laughs> oh that's amazing that it's beautiful I, I love that's perfect <laughs> yeah because um yeah, I, I can tell your documentary style in your pictures, I would say, like, because, and that's why I love your pictures. So everybody who, who don't know, who don't know Katie, she makes beautiful pictures from the Dominican Republic and also Haiti. You've been in Haiti recently, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I mean, not, not only because, not, not only, I mean, how should I say, you, you don't make the, those commercial, like, mass media mainstream pictures you <laughs> have an eye for you have an eye for culture and you have an eye oh, for culture. something raw and i'm really i'm all i mean you know i i'm really into culture and and you are the first non how should i say dancer you are a dancer also but i mean you promote yeah, dominican <laughs> culture yeah i mean you you love to dance so you are a dancer right um <laughs> Uh, but how should I say you, you, you promote the Dominican culture in a different, from a different angle. And that's what I love about, you know, um, about what you do. And I wanted to, that, you know, I wanted to bring you on this podcast because for me, it's about authenticity. It's about culture. Um, it can be brought, right. And you don't have to be a, how should I say, you don't have to call yourself a promoter, but you're still promoting in a way, the culture. So I, I, that's why I, I really connect to what you do. And I really wanted you to be, here on my podcast i'm really happy <laughs> that you're yeah. here to oh, well, thank you so much for having me i'm so happy to be here yeah <laughs> nice so um everybody who has never been um, on this show you guys you can you're welcome to ask questions to katie and to me anything which is related of course <laughs> okay don't uh, make yeah, stupid don't comments <laughs> with the questions. don't put me Please. on the spot <laughs> exactly so you're welcome to ask us questions and make comments. So it's more like an interactive, um, um, you know, chat. That's the idea of tonight. Okay, so cool. Um, so what, okay, just to, so you, you went to the DR for the first time. That was when again, you said? Uh, 2019. So it was actually, oh. yeah, so that was the first time I, I had come to the DR. And it was actually to visit, I think he's even there right now. Is Alex there? It was to visit my friend Alex, who's, who's from, um, he's from Haiti. I met him in Haiti and my other friend Papito. And I, the first time I ever went to Haiti was in, I believe, 2016, 17. Mm. No, it's 2017, somewhere around there. And that's when I met them. And they moved to Santiago. Uh, de los Caballeros in Dominican and I had already graduated my master's and I was I didn't want to stay in Toronto I just I wanted to go out and travel and and like practice my my freelance photography and videography just like improve and and build my own business kind of thing and they that's how I went to DR so I went to visit them in Santiago and then I somehow, I slowly traveled from Santiago. I went to Cabarete for a month. I traveled around along the coast. And then finally I got to Las Terrenas and I absolutely wow. fell in love with like the dancing in Las Terrenas. And that's how I ended up here. <laughs> wow, <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And yeah, you're, you're, you, are, you are again in Las Terrenas because yeah, you've been there since 
December, you said, right? December exactly. 2020. Yeah, okay. Wow. I can't believe it's almost been like six months. That's crazy. Time goes I know. by really fast. <laughs> yeah. I still remember I was surprised when I saw your stories you uploaded, I think. And then I'm like, are you in DR again? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I, that's kind of my style. If you ask any of my family and friends, I'll just kind of pick up and go without telling many people. And they'll be like, the hell? <laughs> they'll look on my social media I love and it. be like, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I love it. And I can relate to it in that way because, I mean, I'm my, my main job is a flight attendant, right? So I, I'm... You know, but it's my main job and my, my main income, you know, but it's, um, yeah. but it's still a difference. It's, it's different, you know, when I go and I come back after two days and you actually stay there for, I don't know how long. So do you have any plans when you go somewhere or is it more like you just go with the flow? I honestly didn't have a, I didn't have a plan when I came here. I was planning to stay here short term, but I think the pandemic figured into that a lot because right now Canada is super closed down, so I can't. Like, for me to go back right now, I don't even have, like, an apartment there. I don't really have, like, any stable work opportunities there. So, I mean, why not pass the pandemic next to a beach? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just jealous. I see, I see your stories, you know. I mean, beautiful, beautiful landscape. But also, the like, cook, like, I see, like, cooking scenes, like, somewhere in somebody's garden. Yeah, like. And then the, and, and recently, I mean, it's already been almost two months, but um, I think the last really like series of pictures you uploaded were from Gaga or it wasn't, it was actually Gaga, right? Because you were in, you, it was it both in Haiti and in Dominican Republic. No, the pictures are from Haiti. They're from yes. Haiti. Okay. Yeah. And it's, um, they're just amazing pictures, especially because I wrote a, an article. Um, yeah, I Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Thank it was you. Such I, perfect timing in Semana Santa too. So yes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a ritual, right? It's like a Semana Santa. I mean, it's an like Easter ritual coming from the ha from Haiti, but it, you know, they have it also in the Dominican Republic because of the Haitian immigrants, and then in Cuba also they have it also, yeah. but again, a bit different. So it's just like a really, really interesting area and i wanted to write um an article for um embajador dominicano and um i had to do a lot of research but you actually i mean i i have seen i've been in the dr and i've been i've seen the gaga like in semana santa so i have you know experienced it but i didn't have any knowledge back then so it, i'm really i would like to go back again with this knowledge i have now because yeah. back then it was only just like i was just like in awe like well, well what don't even you don't even appreciate like the depth of it, the complexity of it when you first yeah. see it. And when I was the same way because when I first got to Dominican, I had no previous knowledge of what Gaga was. And then the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, like this rhythm, it's so infectious. And it like the, everyone has such high energy and stuff. But then I started actually looking into it and I'm like, holy crap, this, yeah. this stuff is deep. Like this has a yeah. lot of layers to it. Like, like spiritually, religiously, culturally, in every which way, the music, the dance, everything. And ever since then, I've just like been very impressed by everything uh, to do with Gaga. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I, I'm so jealous that you have been to Haiti also and that you have seen actually how, how they celebrate. Oh, that was so interesting. Yeah, that share, share, really, share. Was, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was a super interesting experience. So I, um, was originally introduced to Gaga in um, a neighborhood or a region of the capital called San Isidro, which is to the east of Santo Domingo. And um, the place that I went to originally and, and saw it is called Borohol. It's, it's a bate. Um, and it was through a friend, like some friends from Las Terrenas, that they took me there and I started to see it and I started to participate as an observer so i would i would go and i would watch and be fascinated on the sidelines <laughs> so they actually they train like they have practices and they have rehearsals like throughout the year and semana santa is kind of like the culmination of all of these uh rehearsals so uh each gaga is kind of a group like they have band leaders they have like the dancers the performers the musicians this particular um, 
Gaga from San Isidro called Mundi Fe, they brought a lot of their musicians over from Haiti. So even the first time I was introduced to them, the musicians that were playing the music were from Haiti. They would come for Semana Santa and then they would go back afterwards. So that was really cool. They're very talented. Um, yeah, and then about, yeah, a, a year and a half later when I came back here, I remained in contact with the uh, leader of the Gaga, um, Moronta, and he was really kind enough to invite me to accompany them in Semana Santa. Since a lot of the Gaga were not doing anything here in the Dominican because of the pandemic, uh, it was a lot more complicated to go out because of the curfew, because of like the, mm -hmm. the police were were being a lot more uh, strict and stuff like that. So they decided to like, for me, it's incredible, like what they decided to do, because it's a really big feat, like to take a bunch of like, it was like 45 of us and like cross the border into Haiti and and just like compete it like it was like um I don't know if you, you're familiar with like the other carnival kind of bands, how you cross the stage and you compete and then there's judges and they say like, who's the best and stuff like that. So that was basically what was happening over there. And I, I actually didn't know that at the time, but I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm going too far ahead now. Let me oh. first. <laughs> Get share whatever. <laughs> yeah, please, please get me, give me the excitement. Yeah. <laughs> share whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, the leader of the band, he he invited me along. Um, it was about forty-five of us. It was the dancers, the performers, the the las reinas, which are the women who dance as well, and the los mayores, which are. If you've seen the pictures, they're the ones with like the traditional skirts and the batons, like the dancers who perform, and of course the musicians. Um, a few of the musicians were already over in Haiti because they lived there, so we met them when we got there. So um, even just the journey from Dominican to Haiti was <laughs> was in itself like oh yeah an experience for sure, like because. We went to Pedernales, which is the border town between Dominican and Haiti. And then from Pedernales, you get there by bus, but from Pedernales, you take a boat and you go along the coast. So to wow. actually, cross into, actually cross into Haiti, it's like five minutes. So okay. there's Ansapit. Ansapit is the little border town on the other side. But really in the boat, it's seven hours that you go along the coast in order to get to Marigo, which is the town where the, the boats dock. And it's oh. the nearest place to where is most well-known is Jacmel, which is a, the most well-known city probably in, the, in that area. So yeah, that was fun. That was interesting. A lot of people caught seasick and- oh, I was just <laughs> gonna say, I was just caught seasick. Oh my God, seven hours on boat? Wow. Fortunately, this was not my first time doing this journey because my friends Alex and Papito had taken me on this route um, when I went to when I met them for the first time in Haiti. So I sort of knew what was going on. Like I knew how long the journey would take. I knew where we were going. I know knew when we would get there. But I totally understood like other people who were a bit like nervous about it. They're like, where in the world are we? It was like their first time crossing over the border and they're like what is going on so wow wow it was an experience um so yeah we got there we were kindly um welcomed into the home of one of the the members there and we were sleeping in um that area i was sleeping actually luckily papito my friend lived nearby so i was sleeping in in a little town called kawik and then just like craziness for the whole week it's just like it's like carnival it's like just the liberation it's like a you know like every single day and night you're going out you're you're hearing the music you're dancing like i have an infinite amount of admiration for the the performers and the musicians of the gaga because they are going hard 
for hours. And not only are they playing their instruments, not only are they dancing and performing and doing whatever they need to do, they're also like walking on the most difficult terrain. Like there's rocks and like streams and I can't even walk down a street without like stepping into a puddle by accident. Like <laughs> nevertheless, like holding an wow. instrument, playing on the beat and like singing and, and drinking and like dancing and doing all of this fun stuff. So infinite amount of admiration for those musicians for sure. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, so basically um, it was really cool to see because Gaga obviously is derived from Haitian Gaga. It's basically the same thing but in the Dominican Republic. Um, so it was cool to see the group of Gaga, like, for the first time, a lot of them experiencing it in Haiti, like the place from where it was born, or the, the origin. Um, right. So I think I heard a lot of comments about people like, saying like, Oh, the energy here is so great. Like the people are really supporting us. And like the people really, like, like, love it. And they they come in and join us. Because I think in the Dominican, um, a lot of people have maybe erroneous uh, thoughts about what is Gaga, and maybe they uh, don't, they don't like to participate because they think it's like something negative, or um, they look down upon it. Like I don't I don't really know like the full reasons for all of that, but. Mm. But I think it, they felt that in, in Haiti it was more accepted and it was more supported and it was a lot more energy and stuff like that. Wow. So, so you're talking about the, the Gaga artists and dancers from the DR experiencing... Exactly, yeah. It, wow. That that's was my impression, yeah. So uh -huh. I think they felt like really happy about it and they, they were really... Um, yeah, they just felt really supported. That's yeah. amazing. That it yeah. sounds almost like, yeah, it's like I mean, it's like embracing their own roots, embracing their own culture. You know, they're living it. And yeah, I I was writing that in the article also that I mean, because in the DR, I just happened to have the honor to see a Gaga during Semana Santa with my ex boyfriend. But that was like I don't know, maybe nine years ago. I don't know. Yeah. I can't even remember when it was. Like it, many many years ago. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the thing is like, yeah, you have to go to a bate to see this, right? Like it doesn't happen in the, in the bigger cities or like in a touristic area, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and you have to go to a certain place and it's, yeah. And even then, like within the Dominicans, it's not very, yeah, as I say, like not, not everybody appreciate, not all Dominicans appreciate it, not the old Dominican, um, love it. There's also an artist, he makes, um, music, Gaga music, um, mm -hmm. John, John, um, John is his name, and and he makes like like a bit of like a modern kind of gaga, which is also beautiful. And he, you know, they, I mean, there are people out there who are really trying to. Can how you should I say? His name yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yes, I will. Yeah, he also has music on Spotify. Um, I don't, I can't recall like um the um, his Instagram name right now, but he's doing an amazing job. And I, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. I guess it's like a sensitive um, subject maybe, but um, I think it's beautiful when, you know, they can get to experience that, okay, he, yeah, they're feeling welcome. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It definitely, it definitely is like a very complex topic. I think, um, I think like as an observer, someone who is just there like to, to take it all in kind of from like an outside perspective, like I think it's just, really beautiful to experience and beautiful to watch and and it's so hard to really understand everything that's going on because there's so much like there's so many different aspects to it as well but um yeah just being able to be there is it's great At, like you said because it doesn't like the access to it isn't that easy like it's not like you can go to the colonial center of santo domingo right. see, or that, that. like you have to <laughs> You have yes. to know someone who, who can take you there or know someone who knows someone that can take you there. So, so yeah, the, the access is, is quite a, 
a difficult thing to to find for just any foreigner who comes to the country who doesn't know about it you know so right I got, I got yeah. lucky in that in that yeah. aspect <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and even in Haiti, like you could even see that. Um, yeah, how like because I feel like in vacations they embrace that culture way more. I feel like um, I don't know what your experience, yeah. but but the, I mean that's something you you were also saying, right? Um, yeah, I think I think there's there still is some issues in Haiti, but I don't think I think it's a different story than that of the Dominican because yeah, right. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> the yeah, <it> because, complex. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. But I, I mean, I, um, I don't know. I was doing the research and I, I found an article saying how um, some Haitians in the U.S., they also celebrate Gaga in some cities in the oh, U.S. Yeah, in New York, there's tons. In I think York, so. I think the, yeah, in, in yeah. Like, uh, what's the big central central park? That's a big part. Yeah, I think so. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not good with location. Yeah, I know. I've I've just seen videos of like huge gatherings in let's say it's called Central Park. Yeah. Yeah. And Miami, I think as well. Where wherever there's like big uh, Haitian diaspora communities. Exactly. And um, also, last my last guest was Alison from Martinique, and um, she also says that how in even in Martinique the Haitians celebrate Gaga like she knows Gaga from really? Martin yeah yeah so that's why I have the impression awesome. that I yeah right so I I was really impressed by that so I had the impression that oh I have the impression that Haitians um um really embrace that part of their culture more yeah, so, than so Dominican what I know as well from what I've heard, and this probably like isn't the case for every single person who, who participates in Rara, but um, the religious aspect of it is there's some sort of obligation mm. that you have to make to the Rua. I always pr- mispronounce that. So there's always like kind of a spirit that, that yeah. uh, or like a, a Rua that guides each uh, group. And then mm-hmm. every year in Semana Santa, there's an obligation for you to go out and like appease that law in order for like things to remain in balance. So I'm sure that that sense of obligation is what has ha- allowed and helped um, Rara continue to be so strong, even if they're like feeling disconnected from their home country, even if they're like diaspora, different communities in different in different places, they're still like that, like call you know like there's that yeah oh, we gotta do it <laughs> so. yeah wow it's it's beautiful so i mean so so um there's, there's one question so in in uh, you were mentioning about um the female dancers are um, called queen they're called they're the queens yeah, in uh, Rana. Las, it, reinas. las reinas but in in the dr mm-hmm. is it also because it was like to be honest with you it was a bit difficult sometimes for me to um understand if uh, women are also allowed to dance because i had the impression that there were more uh, male dancers than so female but they're, they're both yeah yeah so from what i'm speaking is only from my experience of observing this particular gaga group from san isidro so even like when i was in haiti obviously there's a language barrier because i don't speak haitian creole or or french either sorry my battery um (laughs) so yeah like i most of whatever i'm saying is either from what i've read or from what i've seen uh from from san isidro from mondife and in their group of of uh gaga they have the mayores who are most likely male and they have the baton and the the traditional skirts and then the las reinas are also just as part of the the group as as the men it's just they have different roles that they play Mm -hmm. Uh, so okay las reinas would would maybe walk like in front and they each have like a position they also like uh mayores is military terminology so they use like military terminology to delegate different roles within the group as well and there's a book that was written by it's like a really famous book because it's one of like the only full books that was written about 
Rara, I believe. So it talks about that. There's a whole chapter dedicated to military terminology in Gaia. I, I think a, a, a female, right? A female, yeah. something Rose, Rosenberg or something. Yeah, I think we're thinking about the same book. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I forget I, what I her name also, is, though. Yeah. Yeah, Julia, yeah. Julia Rosenberg or something like this, or something with Jay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I wanted to read the whole thing, but I haven't. I haven't, but okay. Wow. I've read about three quarters of it. I have a few chapters left. Oh. <laughs> well done, well done. I'm, I'm not good. I'm not, I'm not a good it's reader. Really so. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, it's, it's super interesting. Get an audio book. <laughs> okay, I will. I will. I should study yeah. more. I don't. <laughs> no, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> Papi, Papito Surf Haiti is sending oh, many. Papito. <laughs> Hi, Papito. I've been talking about you, Papito. Is Alex there too? <laughs> no. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, just you know, just feel free to comment anything. <laughs> um, engage with us. Wow, but that's that's amazing. So, how how long did you stay in Haiti then? It, during that um, Semana Santa, the like Kaga period. I believe it was a full week. So mm. we got there like just before the festivities commenced and then we left kind of a couple of days after to give everyone some time to rest and recover. <laughs> it was quite wow. a, quite a long journey, yeah. Yeah, especially um on the way back even it was it was quite difficult to to cross the border even back into the Dominican Republic. Not only not only for me, but for for even like the, the rest of the Gaga who were Dominican citizens and had their cedula, they had their like identification and everything like that. So it was a little, it was a little difficult. Oh. <laughs> we, I think there were like, I think there were 14 checkpoints between when we crossed the border and then got to Santo Domingo, and I think we were stopped in like ten of them or something what? like that. So we had to, yeah, we had to, we had to get off the bus about ten times. It was. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. What a journey! Yeah. Wow. And that's after the seven-hour boat ride from Haiti, so you can imagine. Yeah, I was just gonna say there was still the. Yeah, I was really, I was really grumpy by the end of it. I was just like, it's like no one, no one get close to me. <laughs> just like get me to a bed as fast as possible. <laughs> oh my god, I can't imagine. Oh, wow. so much paper. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, but so so how was it in to be in Haiti? Like, did you find some similarities, or was it like really different apart besides the Gaga experience? Like. How was, how? How was Haiti? I mean, my experience in Haiti, getting to know Haiti was really the first time I was there, which was in around 2017. So when I, when we went there this time, we only stayed within a, a specific part. So that was Marigo and that was where the, the Gaga was going on. And I stayed with Papito and Kavik. If you're, Hi, Papito. <laughs> He's putting lots of faces. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> so I, I, I stayed in, in Kabik, which is a really, it's a really cute, like, little beach town nearby to where we were. Um, so, like, we didn't really get to see much of the country. But when I went there the first time is, is I had always, like, had an idea of what Haiti would be like and when I actually went there physically to see for myself it was like completely different because the way that Haiti is portrayed uh outside of the country like to to North American audiences is just it has a specific narrative like it's they always talk about it like the poorest country and like there's so much problems and the the earthquake and this yeah and and, and yes that is true but but also there is so much beauty in Haiti like there especially the way that people talk about it in in the Dominican the the ways that I've heard it spoken about in the Dominican like it you get this image in your head as if it's like this barren wasteland that it's like just like nothing over the border but then 
in my opinion, in my humble opinion, like the beaches and the natural beauty of Haiti is actually even more beautiful than here for me. Because, wow. because there's no development like of buildings or like there's none of that kind of like urban s stuff in, in certain parts of it that take away from the natural beauty. And obviously, of course, there is big cities in, in Haiti as well. Depends where you are. But when you're seeing, like, the natural beauty of it, it's, it's absolutely breathtaking. It's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And Amazing. And, of course, the people are just... The yeah. people are so lovely, so friendly, just, like, welcome you with open arms. That's how I felt with Papito and Alex. They took me in as if I was their own family, like... You know, just showed me around, even though, like, asking for nothing in return from me. And, and I just felt, like, right at home. And, and I saw so much of the country. Because, obviously, like, if so many people talk bad about your country outside, and if someone comes, you're going to want to be like, hey, listen, this is actually not the way it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, that's beautiful. So I think so, more, I mean, more people should yeah. try and make the journey. <laughs> and with a seven hours ride <laughs> by the boat ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's other options. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, good, good. Good, good to know. Because I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> do you get seasick? I get seasick, get yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't recommend that for you. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. And you, you post many beautiful pictures, so sometimes I'm not really sure, is, is it Dominican Republic or is it Haiti? Like, do you mix? Because I've seen the Gaga, the Gaga post you write down, but are there also like landscape pictures of Haiti? I always try and post the location of wherever I took the picture. Oh, you, oh so you do? Okay. I try to, yeah. So um, maybe I should start writing in the, the caption, but you're right. I always mix it up because my, my timeline is not chronological at all. <laughs> Which is the yeah. beauty, right? It, yeah. It's beautiful. But right, that's the of thing. Course. It's like it goes together because it's the same type of feel, like the tropical feel, but it's from different places. Some are from Colombia as well. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, I know it is. Yes, true, yeah. true, yeah. I mean, I love your pictures. I, I just love your pictures. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I oh, try, because, I yeah. try. <laughs> but it's really it's really the the eye you have for for the yeah the the as i said like i said it at the beginning already but i feel like there's a lot of appreciation for the culture which comes you know across the picture yeah, yeah so I think, like i think like you know studying like coming from a background studying documentary media it gets talked a lot about like the ethics of documentary and the oh. ethics of documentation so interesting oh yeah it's it's <laughs> it's funny when we first went into our our master's program they were saying to us like you're gonna hear a lot about like ethics and and the different like the different ways in which documentary up until now has not been uh, done gone about in the best of ways and and I think the professors like were warning us like this may make you want to drop out. It may make you want to not be a documentarian at all because obviously you're saying like if you're not from a culture in order to document somebody else's culture, there's always something problematic in that, right? There's always Oh my god, I I love that subject. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really I love important. that. Yeah. It's very important. What do you like what do you think about it? That's so, it, it, yeah, uh, <laughs> many things right now at the same time I have to <laughs> come down. But I mean, the first thing which come, kind of pops into my mind is like cultural appropriation. Um, and also sometimes I also feel like, you know, well, I'm not a Domin I'm not Dominican. Okay, I'm, I, I'm coming also from a different culture and I'm teaching Dominican culture, so to, so to say. And for me, dancing is culture i mean you can't separate dance from a culture or music i mean for me it's all together uh so you know i'm also a dance instructor um as, a, as my side job and that's why that's how we connected right because of like the, my passion for the dominican culture and dance and music but like okay I, i'm teaching dancing but really i'm teaching culture in the end and i want to really be authentic and i want to try my 
I want to try my best to be respectful towards yeah. the culture, which is especially foreign to me. Um, and also, I also feel like sometimes, you know, oh, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I know that some Dominicans love what I do. And I know there are also some Dominicans who don't really appreciate what I'm doing because I'm, you know, I'm talking about their culture. Mm. Um, I'm making money, so to say. I'm earning money with it. Okay. So I, I do have sometimes mixed feelings about it, but that's why I really try to, I really want to live this respect, to, like being respectful towards the culture. And I always mention, I always try to mention something about history, something about the mentality, something about musicality, like anything, you know, in the whole, like I try to approach, for example, bachata because I'm teaching bachata in merengue. Yeah. I always try to explain the dance from a holistic, you know, yeah, in a holistic way, because I can't take anything out. Right. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things. And something said, Papito, ah, it's pretty tough, but it is good experience at the same time driving the boat to get there. Even if it's really tired and comfortable. <laughs> I've done that since I was a little puppy. Well, <laughs> kudos Papito, to you, Papito. <laughs> Papito does that journey like every other day. Every week he does it. Wow. <laughs> wow. He toughs it out. <laughs> yeah, I need to practice for my seasickness. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so that that's something, and I I'm I'm sorry, like I could keep on talking about, about this cultural appropriation, no, but it's really, yeah. To it's tell really me, what important. do you think? I think, um, I mean, even even when you asked me to like come on and speak with you today, I was nervous and a little uncomfortable because because in order for me to talk about Gaga and the things that I take photos of and document. I can't, I can't claim to be an expert in any of these areas because this is not my culture. This is not like my background. I'm here as in a position of extreme privilege. Like I'm a white woman who was born in Canada and, you know, has come here to live of my own free will and, and living comfortably and everything like that. So it's really difficult for me to come here and be like oh yeah gaga this and rah rah that and like and talk about the history and like the complexities of it which is why you know I often try and it's I think it's important to shift that narrative not into becoming an authority on the subject but just talking about what my experiences are as an outside observer so I think that's important I think it's a, it's really important to constantly be in a conversation with people from those communities from within those communities yes. so it's not only it's not only just like a conversation but also being open to having things being said to you like you said some people don't like what i'm doing okay i'm open to hearing that i'm open like let's talk about it let's let's like debate it let's go over it like what what is what is wrong with it and how can we fix it like how can we move towards something that is more responsible more sustainable more um representative right because going back to the theme of like the topic of documentary there's always been easier access for certain people to document or to be the voice of authority on things because who has the power to to show these images, who has the power to manipulate these images and tell the stories that, that they want to be told, right? And often those stories are about people who have no say in how they're being depicted. So that's the issue here, right? So, so wow. how do we fix yes. that? Yeah. Oh, I love that. So it's, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's the, that's the thing though it's just always being aware or as we say as the millennials say being woke we got to be woke uh, <laughs> always being aware um and always being like open to having those conversations and yeah. collaborating you know so yeah I, I love it. I love it. And what I, what I also find really important is like curiosity. 
because you know um because not everybody is open and not everybody is humble and sometimes i mean i also have had my you know like i, I mean i had also my um ignorant phases you know and i'm sure i'm ignorant at some point like everybody, i you know yeah everybody does right you know like it's like after that like you know after some time you realize oh my god i've been so ignorant you know and then you yeah. kind of start to realize what kind of ignorant things you've said or a mindset you had in the past but then the more you learn you you realize it you know so that's it's i think it's like a process so but what really helped me i find is that i always was curious i've always mm-hmm. been curious about different cultures yeah. because I I grew up with two different cultures and um, my mom's Japanese my father's German I grew up in Germany but that was kind of like this is like my base this um you know growing up with different cultures and I yeah. think you are you also have different backgrounds right you kind you're, of yeah, yeah so I I was born in Canada but uh my family were Hungarian Jewish Ah uh, yeah okay right yeah because you're yeah because of your name also and yeah. yeah and i think i mean that kind of helped me to be to i know the feeling of being misunderstood mm-hmm. you know being mis i mean being misunderstood by people who don't know your culture right or um or not giving credit to what's what's depriving from your culture like i i've always felt that frustration since i was a, like a, a child um like an example like i don't know japanese animation became really huge when i was like small like 30 years ago and then people would start talking about japanese animation and i would feel like but no it's not about that like you know i would feel really frustrated mm-hmm. because i had this yeah. impression you know like that it's like a, it's a, it's like an example or sushi nobody even knew where japan was 30 years ago and now everybody's eating sushi but at least you know at least they know where it's coming from <laughs> you know so i <laughs> I guess that's something it's like okay yeah they they know sushi is japanese but then but then what what really really frustrates me with bachata or like the dominican dance for example not everybody knows where bachata comes from unless they dig deeper into that you know and i think in the end it the difference between the people who dig deeper and who kind of want to stay ignorant if i can use that word is really the curiosity i find like are you curious yeah. enough to like what is bachata where does it come from like yeah. oh dominican pop you know like how do the dominican dance like because i've always wanted to learn how the dominican dance or when i learned salsa well i i wanted to learn how the cuban dance salsa right so right. or flamenco i wanted to learn how spanish people dance flamenco i mean i was always curious and i that that kind of helped me to dig deeper and deeper definitely curiosity and i think also which is something you also have as well is constantly just being humble and like being able to to admit when you make a mistake and and to admit when you've like either done or said something ignorant and and like the good intention of wanting to improve on that I think is super important as well. Yeah, well I can only give it back to you Katrin oh, because <laughs> and I'm not Katrin like Katie um because okay what before I say something um Eugenia Eugenio is saying hello Eugenio. Eugenio. <laughs> I think it's awesome Katrin now that I'm living in a different oh. culture I realize how positive you impacted my culture in Cartagena. Wow. Ah, oh, thank you Eugenio. Eugenio's from Cartagena. He's living in Spain now. He's going to school in Spain. I'm so happy for for him. I'm so proud of him. He's such a smart cookie. Wow. <laughs> beautiful. That's a beautiful comment for you, Katie. You, um but really, you know, it's interesting at the beginning, I mean, before we start talking about this cultural appropriation or respect towards culture. To be honest with you, I could Why we're talking about Gaga or yeah like, Katie and I could feel you were very trying to be very careful like really <laughs> yeah. oh, it's good it's good uh, like how I, do I talk <laughs> about this without <laughs> talking about it <laughs> Yeah I just okay. said Yeah it, it yeah, is I and I yeah because I don't want to because it's like you can't I can say what my opinion is and what my perspective is but I I also understand the power and impact behind like what comes out of my mouth like someone can take what I'm talking about as more important than some what someone else says but what I'm saying is really just my perspective it's like what I was observing so I guess like we just 
if we put a disclaimer underneath that just says, this is just my perspective. Yes. Yes. <laughs> my I'll, mom yeah. totally accurate. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. I, I will definitely write it down and because okay. I'm going to save this video and then I'm oh. going to write a disclaimer. So don't worry. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but that's also what I made sure. And when I promote and uh, promoted this um, podcast beforehand, I was telling like you were gonna share uh, your experience, like because it's all about experience in the end, you know. Exactly, and but that, yeah. but I really, I really appreciate your experience. Like last time we had Alison here again, as I said, like you know, I keep bring up her because that was also we talked a lot about culture, and that's why it's so it's interesting how we're you know both podcasts are kind of talking about culture and cultural appropriation, etc. Um, but it's um, it's really. I find experience is so valuable, right? It's, and, and I think, um, yeah, you can inspire people and you can also not teach, but like show, like this is something you can experience if you're open enough, if you're curious enough. And you, you know, like it's, um, yeah, because like, yeah. It's gonna be, Hello? Hello? <laughs> Sorry. The connection. I think I lost you for a second. Are we back? Yeah, I'm, yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay. okay good. <laughs> yeah, like at the end of the day, like for example, there's like people aren't going to stop traveling. Like people aren't going to stop doing yoga. People aren't going to stop eating sushi or, right. or whatever. Right? So like there's always going to be that, that mix of cultures, but it's a question of, of whether or not you're willing to take responsibility and, and do the work, you know, just to, to know like the background context of, of everything. Like don't just take everything as it comes to you. And I think right. specifically for, pe for people in positions of privilege, it's a lot easier for us to do, right? So I think we need to not take that for granted. I really, oh, yeah. I really believe I really believe that anytime I am going to visit a new country, like as a tourist, like just for pleasure travel, I have like an obligation and a responsibility to actually know where I'm going and, and like what the context is. Like, am I contributing to something like that shouldn't be going on here? Or, and which is kind of hard to avoid in, in certain places, but at the same time, even when I'm coming to the Dominican Republic, I had an idea of the history of the country. I had an idea of like the different tensions that go on here between, for example, Dominicans and, and Haitians, which is one, one example. So wow. I think that any person who's traveling um, has that responsibility, which not, not a lot of people, well, now more, hopefully, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you think people it's are interesting. becoming more responsible travelers? <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I think, you know, and thanks to um, social media and internet, uh, we do definitely have an abundance of information, right? And we get to choose. And I think there are also amazing, like, influencers out there who, you know, for example, there's this guy, Drew Binsky. I love his videos. And um, he has traveled most of the, um, most of the countries and the world. Um, but it's not mm -hmm. like, um, I, I love it how he shows traveling not as like consuming um, material, but more like sharing his experience again and sharing his knowledge he gained and also like, you know, hi highlighting something which is maybe um, a bit untouched or invisible somehow. So giving like, he's using his platform to, to spread the knowledge, right? And that's what I really, really um, yeah. love about his work, for example. Um, but I also have to say, um, it's, it's, it's impressive that you, you, you said you studied about the Dominican and Haitian history, so to say, before you went to the DR. Did you, did you do that? Well, yeah, I actually, my undergrad, it was in Caribbean studies. So oh. that's before I did documentary study, I was doing Caribbean studies in, in mm. my undergrad. And my main focus, other than Colombia, like my main focus of interest was Haitian history because to me Haiti has one of the most fascinating <laughs> histories yeah. of all the world. So I I under I had that background knowledge and then when I started to look more into Dominican I started to realize the tensions between the Dominicans and Haitians. The first the first uh, introduction I had to that was a book I read by um oh my god a famous author but it was about the the Parsley Massacre. 
from mm. Trujillo. Right. So that was my first introduction to that. In, in my oh, wow. Wow. Days. It was called The Farming of Bones, I believe. The Farming of Bones. Wow. Okay. Wow. And that's yeah. so impressive. I'm. I really have respect for people who know who who can read and study prior their trip. To be honest with you, because I'm a bit, I I I I love to learn about the culture when I'm there. I'm a bit more like a practical practical person. I'm really a bad reader. I'm really a bad reader. Um, yeah. So, but I have. Um, yeah. Then to be like so so like the first time I went to the Dominican Republic was because of my ex boyfriend. Uh, we were living in the in Germany and. I love listening. I'm a very, I love listening to people's story, right? So, and I always wanted to understand his culture. Hi, hello, are you there? I'm here, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Raining. It's raining here, so the connection oh. is a bit funky. But we should okay, be well, it's, yeah, okay, we should be fine, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I always, I've, I'm very into mentality, people's mentality. I wanted to understand his mentality, his, um, like, you know, but I'm not good in reading or doing research on my own. But then when we went there, you know, I love to observe also. And I also li like to blend in as much as possible. Like, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> like that's me. And um, also because of my work, as I, as I mentioned, I'm, a, you know, I'm, I've been working as a flight attendant for that's 13 good. years. And I, yeah. hello? Yeah, like in customer service. You can't, like, yeah, yeah. The center of shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and you know, I've been to so many different countries, and I always try to blend in because I I I don't want to catch too much too much attention. Not only because of safety, but I want to be treated like in a normal way, and I also like to respect. I mean, you know, I want to I want to res I respect the culture, and I I respect mentality, but I also have have to observe. I love to observe and learn mm -hmm. by observing, right? Um, so he, yeah, thanks to my ex boyfriend, like I, I've been, I knew about the, the issues or this tension, um, you know, things like that. So, yeah. but I, I think, I um, yeah. Anyone, anyone who goes to a country with that sort of mentality is going to learn a lot because yeah because people are always willing to share their experiences and their their ideas behind it and just by pure observance you know you can learn a lot i think i think the issue is is when when someone goes to the to another country with the sole intention of of getting shit face drunk and like leaving a bunch of garbage on the beach like you know like oh. it's irresponsible or and and you can't even blame like individuals because you know a lot of places are set up for that like a lot of places are that's what they're marketed as yes like just come yeah. here and enjoy an anonymous beach like literally the beach can be in any country like it doesn't have to be a dominican beach because it's right. all the same like if you go to right. a big resort it's all the same so i mean that's not that's not going to a country to learn about the country it's going somewhere to just take advantage of the landscape <laughs> oh yeah totally totally it's it's really interesting because i mean for example like I, i'm not very into i, I i'm not very into, but I, it doesn't excite me like what really excites me is more the the nightlife like music and dance and, and the cuisine like things like that really the, the how people live that that's what i mean for me that's what what excites me most the most so, you know, Dominican Republic or Cuba does happen to be like a Caribbean place. But, you know, um, like I was focused more on the like, how do people live? Actually, you know, they mm -hmm. Dominicans, for example, waking up early in the morning, everybody starts cleaning the house, you know. And then I remember I, I'm just a long sleeper and I, I, I'm really not good waking up early. And then I would wake up at nine or something. And then people are like, me, happy Le limpia tu casa. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't wake up with the roosters. The roosters I did. wake you up at five in the morning. <laughs> no, I did, but then I was just so late. <laughs> I, I, you just I'm telling you. I just, yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I, I just, I, I just love to watch how people like my neighbors were living in the Dominican Republic. You know how they just spent their afternoon. How, yeah, yeah, everything. I just love I mean, to understand like, the daily life. 
that's probably I mean what like con like you feel a connection with the pictures that I take and really like the intention behind the pictures that I take is literally the stuff that people here would find completely mundane and it's just like normal like what they're looking at me mirror like why are you taking a picture of the chicken on the, <laughs> like why but like to me it's something interesting because I didn't grow up around that so like I guess I'm more sensitive to to it even though I've I've been living uh in in that type of environment for a very long time I still see things like that and I see why some other people would find it interesting and and I also think like you know, it's it's very important to be respectful of people. Like I often, I like taking landscape. I love taking pictures of people, but I don't even take as many pictures of, pe of people as I want to because I really enjoy being respectful of people's space. <laughs> like I don't like going up into people's face and taking pictures of them. So any, no, but like, really, any yeah. picture, like any picture that I post on my, my Instagram or I use is, it's either like if someone was performing and like everyone else was taking pictures or something like that, or if it's like someone that I know that I have some sort of pre-existing relationship with and, and I have like consent and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just things that I see that maybe are interesting to me that to them is just like, I, I do this every day. I don't know why <laughs> you're taking a picture of it. <laughs> and that's why I'm so, I love your picture. Oh, hello. But that's it's exactly that's uh, what I love. Oh hi. I it's a daily you. life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's a, daily, it's a daily, life. daily life, really. I I love it, and it's but because dancing is also about daily life, you know. It's nothing. It's not a big deal. It's part of you know they they hear bachata every day everywhere. Um, most of Dominicans don't even dance bachata as much as maybe non-dominicans do right like i get all excited yeah. and i want to dance, dance like all the time yeah also dance like when whenever i dance bachata with a dominican who's not like in a dance scene or anything it's always like very nice because it's like yeah because i'm not very good with the complicated footwork or like the spins and stuff so it's just very nice to just dance just the basic steps with someone and feel the music you know <laughs> oh, i love that i love it i call it the raw bachata i call it the raw bachata and i think um ron also called it like that and um, ron the dj dj from um uh, from colorado um mm. but uh but i i actually i actually prefer that raw untouched the real deal like i, I love it so much and that brings me back to the memory um to um to the trip we made together we went together to the bate yeah right yeah. some boys um yeah. from la serena and maria and i'm so glad we did yeah. because i mean as i mentioned before i have been to the bate and i have seen gaga because of my ex-boyfriend but back then i didn't even know the word bate and i had no like i just didn't have any knowledge you know so i, I didn't i, yeah. I couldn't Appreciate, I did appreciate it, but I didn't know the how 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 the how context, valuable. Yeah. The I, didn't, I had no idea of the context. And then when I went with you two two, two years ago to one of the bateas, it was beautiful because I just had a different context. I love that um, because it was uh, it was like like see, we we didn't dance a lot. Uh, we didn't get to dance a lot because we arrived a bit late. And some days they stopped the and yeah. party really early but it was one of yeah. the best that was one of the best nights and I had one of the best dances oh my goodness like yeah I remember that that was a really good night that was so yeah, fun was and a great experience. Yeah. yeah so I'm just really grateful I that even, I could go there I think it, it even like just going somewhere like that one time like it's a fantastic experience but really I only start to understand the like the significance of a place or a context that I'm in after I've been repeatedly and seen like different you know like every time you go you get kind of like a new perspective like you get a new insight yes it's always like something different so I think I think it's really cool like anytime anyone has an opportunity to do something like that they should take it Definitely. Oh my God! Like talking to you makes me really want to go to the DR. Oh God, what are you and, I don't 
I miss it too. And now talking to you, like I, I, ah, se movió la ganas. I, I wanna, like, I, yeah, I wanna, I wanna hang out with you and ah. <laughs> as soon as they oh get rid of God. the curfew, you better come. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Right now is, is the curfew. Yeah, it's a curfew, but it's so funny because I, I've, um, I've had many friends. Recently, especially this year, who went to the DR, you know, and they're like, "You should come also." And yeah, it's a curfew, but I don't know. Yeah, I feel a, like, uh, curfew, but, you, but like you know, during the day it's normal, so everyone just parties earlier. <laughs> I know. I, I love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful! Wow. Oh, Katie. Um, I, that's um, like a last question from my side. I don't know. Nobody else is asking any questions, but um, so how how is it for you to live? <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, please ask because um, yeah, um, like we're not gonna talk too long anymore. But 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 my last question for you from my side is how is it to live in the DR as a foreigner, as a non-Dominican? How is it for you, like? Do you have any pros and cons? Like one one pro, one cons, or any struggles? Like, yeah, share anything you want right now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let me think about it. So, yeah, I think there's, like, pros and cons of living in any place. Um, I think I'm going to compare my experiences living here versus when I lived in Colombia because I feel like mm -hmm. that's, more similar to comparing to when I lived in Canada. So I feel that here, especially in Las Terrenas, it's quite touristy. That's a word in English, right? Touristy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I feel like you get to um, kind of experience the local culture to a certain degree while still having comforts from home. So I think um, Eugenio said I left my question. Oh, question? okay. Yes, yeah, I can see it. Um, I thought he was, okay, is there a way to know if a new culture can impact my life in a negative or positive? Wait, I can't, ah. I didn't see wait. it. No, you can see it because I, I only me. <laughs> I didn't know that they can drop it here. Okay, sorry. Um, so is there a way to know if a new culture can impact my life in a negative or positive way? What do you mean by new culture? Well, if you want to answer that, Katie, you you can. Yeah, explain. Welcome I want show. you to explain, Eugenio. What do you uh, like? Mean I, how, yeah, if you can know. Please write it here in the comment, you, Eugenio, yeah. and then we we come back to you while Katie is telling okay, us. Okay, we'll come back to you, Eugenio. <laughs> Clarify, please. Um, yeah, and the, so anyway, as I was saying, so there's a lot of like comforts here. Um, that I'm used to back home. I think um, I think living here, there's certain, um, as a foreigner, especially like a white foreigner, there's certain expectations or, or ideas that people have. So you have to, I guess, be a little more careful about how you interact with with or like how you tread or, or or like maybe it's not as like easy as living with your family and your friends and, and stuff like that like you have to be careful of like interactions that you have like maybe someone will be trying to like get something out of you or but I think that's like in any place that you live as a foreigner like I think it's yeah like, you know like just something that you have to be more aware of and it's not even like um, particular to the Dominican Republic, right? So any place that has a lot of disparity in in um, like economies, and there's a lot of people who who have a lot, a lot of money, like a very high class, and and people who are maybe struggling more, like it's it's a given, right? So you just have to be more open to being aware of your surroundings, like it's maybe not as completely as safe but I will say that actually in Las Terrenas I feel quite safe uh, as a foreigner like there's not 
um, too much crime here. I couldn't say the same about Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. I do feel a little nervous when moving to yeah. Santo Domingo. But that's anytime you travel anywhere, I think you just have to be more aware of your surroundings because anytime someone anytime someone is not from a place and they look lost or like they don't really look know where they're going you're always opening yourself up to to like a possible risk you know mm -hmm, of someone mm -hmm, leading mm -hmm. you astray and that can happen i think that's a very good advice yeah. yeah 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 but that, so, that's yeah. a very good advice you can give to people you know when they're not maybe used to traveling as much or maybe not used to living in Yeah, I think that's like a very good, a uh, very wise thing to share. Yeah, I think anytime, anytime, like I would move to a different country, the most important thing uh, is finding a community, like your community. You know what I mean? Because a lot, a lot of the times, I would, I would be somewhere else, and I would be like. I don't need anyone or like I would like lose touch with a lot of people even back home and and you get really lonely and you get like kind of start losing perspective on that so I think it's really important to always like make sure you have that community and and remain healthy not only physically but mentally as well because it, it's not easy being in a place where where maybe you're not used to the culture or you're not surrounded by people that you know that you know for sure like love and trust you and like want the best for you you know so i think just finding those people that and i'm so lucky to have found a lot of people like that here like i have a lot I was of just really gonna ask friends you. here yeah uh... yeah i do so and and i'm so lucky to have great friends back home who understand that i'm half crazy and move across the world for long periods of time who continue to call me and, and talk to me so yeah I'm really grateful for that too and yeah other than that it's just like getting used to the food and you know not getting traveler's diarrhea you know the basics <laughs> <laughs> <Other than that. laughs> yeah oh wow I really I really appreciate how well Always, always. <laughs> you can connect with, right? On a on a very personal, like yeah, people who understand you really. Um, especially when you're in a place where Wait, it's so different. That last part, I could. Oh, uh, I said it's really. I find. I also find it really important that you can, you know, that you can connect with people when you are, especially like away from home. And also when the mm -hmm. cu culture is different, when the mentality is different, you know, sometimes you want to talk about something, but then they don't maybe understand you because they don't know what it's like to live outside. I mean, 100%. you know, and you don't want to be misinterpreted, like to be saying yes. something that you, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I I've lived in 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 the UK to study. I've lived in Spain, but it was all Europe still, right? <laughs> it's not very far. But even then, I felt like I just want to talk with people who understand my yeah. situation. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know. So um, yeah, I, I'm really happy that you can say that you 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 can, you have the people you can. place people who support oh hello are you katie yeah, are you there yeah, and it's oh, okay cool because also in, it's cool because las terrenas always has like the the people who come to visit now and again like you like you come back and forth and it's so nice to be able to see people like from everywhere in the world like just from all walks of life that come here and you you spend a month with them and they leave and they come back so it's really cool I know. Yeah. Wow. I really hope I can visit you guys. And yeah, really, please I stay can. there. Wait, wait for <laughs> me. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> even, even if I leave, I'll come back when you're here. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Good. It's yeah, it's a bit closer for you. It's a bit closer. It's easier for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, closer wow. For me. It's only four hours. Yeah. 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 
12 thing. Yeah, you can't just come for a week. You have to come for at least three weeks. Oh, I know. Especially from Germany, it's like a longer trip. So yeah, I will, by the way, Eugenio said you already responded my question. Okay, good, good then. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, beautiful, that's Katie. Yeah, I, for me. You there? Hmm? Hello? Hello? Hello, can, can you hear me? I can hear Katie? Oh. Hello. Uh, the connection is a bit unst unstable. Yes. Sorry, it's raining here, so it's kind of it's kind of on and off. Yeah, so no, like I, 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 I we've done well. No, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, is there anything else, she, um, Katie, you would like to share, you want people to know? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Everyone has to come visit me and see it for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come visit Las Morenas. It's really fun here. Um, yeah. Oh, well, Katie, I mean, I can only, I can only say please keep doing what you're doing because I love your pictures. Do more, do more. Oh, yeah. You, you, you oh, used to have another you. account, but... <laughs> You, you you used to have another account with more pictures, yeah, but you you messaged me when you were writing the article, and you're just like, "Where are those pictures?" I'm like, "Oh shit, <laughs> I took them." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm slowly repopulating, and I hope within the next few days my uh, website will be up. So I'll send you the link for that as well when it's yes, up. yes, please, yes, some more please. Stuff. <laughs> oh, exciting! Everybody, please, yeah. please. Follow her. Um, yeah, you will see her name on my on my uh, previous post and on this one also after the video has, um, will be shared. Um, well, if you don't, you guys don't have any questions anymore, I guess um, this will be it for tonight. But it was amazing. That's why I, I knew I wanted you to be here. Um, yeah, I just love yeah, your work. Thank you. And thank you so much for... Thank you so much for having me and, and really thank you for doing everything you do to support women and, and to support people who are doing great work. I really appreciate it. I, I love what you're doing. And yeah, I hope that we both continue to grow together and we reach very high places. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. I love that, Katie. Oh, yeah, no, it was, I, I really enjoyed talking to you and yeah, I think we, we need to, we need to do this again. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in person. Yes. Wait. Maybe in person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wait for me. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, ev thank you everybody for joining us. And yeah, you will. The video will be posted. The whole video. Okay. Yay. And Katie, please take care of yourself. Um, you. Thank too. you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. you. Thank you, same here. And thank you, everybody, for, for coming tonight. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Yeah, I'll talk to you. Bye, Katie. Bye. Bye-bye.